grace of God, I'm speaking on um, we becoming witnesses, isn't it? I want to go straight and don't be afraid. I'll finish in no time. One thing about me is this. Usually I have a lot of points. You don't need all the points. There is always just one thing I'm trying to say because that is what God would have me say. But the many points are intended to convince you in the building. You are not supposed to remember it. But you are just supposed to be convinced here. So that when you step out, you will remember the one thing and be sure that I gave you a lot of facts and figures to buttress the point we have made together. What do you think? So I'm sharing with you from Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And I am supposed to take the B part of it. So I'll do just that. He said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. Very, very powerful scripture. A scripture we have been reading and sharing for over two decades when we answered the call to preach the gospel. And one thing I want to say today, by the time you are leaving, remember this, is the fact that the destiny of every generation lies with the people of faith who live in it. The destiny of every generation lies with the people of faith who live in it. That is what this scripture means. When Jesus was about leaving the earth to go and prepare a place for us and to come back and take us home, he told his disciples, the people to whom he said this, the audience that received this text, were not ordinary people. They were people who had been with him and had followed him and had heard him and had understood exactly what they were about. And he told them this. And I have been preaching and I tell them everywhere I go that the end time church, those of us here and all the saints meeting all around the world, our, our type in the Bible, in the old covenant, are people like Noah and Lot in typing, in typing when you are interpreting the scriptures, a type of the church in the Old Testament is Lot and Noah. But Lot is the most appropriate type of the end time church. You see, Lot followed Abraham after God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 to come out of his father's country to a land he will show him. And by following a man of faith, just like we have followed the apostolic commission that is given to us, Lord prospered alongside Abraham. So prosperity, for instance, is one of the fruits you enjoy when you align yourself and follow people of faith. It is impossible for you to follow the call of God and not prosper. The man David said, I have been young, now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants beg for bread. So prosperity is an arena you walk into as a matter of course. Merely by following the call of God 
and by following faith you will walk into prosperity it is the will of god for our lives salvation prosperity and health these are three key things above all things above marriage above children above everything the desire of the early elders of the church elder john said i wish above all things above traveling to america above traveling to uk to switzerland wherever above having your wedding in june above all those things three things are key a prospering soul a prospering life and a healthy body when you are saved when your life is advancing in peace and when you you are walking in divine health that is the will of the apostolic fathers for the church and as we have come into this service today anybody who have not found faith that is able to save his soul may the lord help you to find faith in the name of jesus anybody whose life is from one struggle to the other your business is not working well life is not going on you don't have peace some of us our businesses are advancing but we don't have peace and that is not prosperity prosperity is advancement in tranquility may the lord help you to find peace and joy and righteousness as your life advance in the name of jesus and sometimes we serve god and we are sick in our bodies may today mark the beginning of your divine health in the name of jesus may every infirmity and sickness afflicting your body your family your marriage your business may it be taken out of us in the name of jesus because we are serving the lord i think exodus 23 26 he said if you shall serve the lord with joy he will take sicknesses out of your midst and bless your water and bless your bread and the lord will make you fruitful on this mother's day anybody still believing god for the fruit of the womb may the lord hear your prayer may he see your tears may he open your mouth and give you the miracle of sarah elizabeth and mary in the mighty name of jesus may that your one son be the equivalent of seven strong sons in the mighty name of jesus but the preamble is if you serve the lord how do we serve the lord how do we he said you shall be witnesses unto me who is a witness a witness is someone who goes about or to court to give testimony of things they have seen or experienced or have heard and can validate and some of us here we are actually called to the place of what we call the witness in chief you are the principal witness of the church as we are here apostle of faith is the principal witness of the church if he tells us that god has six hands we would not ask him prove it we believe him because those who put the white thing around his neck didn't put it there for nothing he was proven as a deacon as an overseer before he was actually commissioned as an apostle by the grace of god he is our principal witness and the many things we have heard from him among many witnesses that is what if even you don't have a testimony the things we have heard from apostle of fair our area apostle the things we have heard from our overseer david lamte the things we have heard from the officers and the deacons of this church i don't need to see jesus i don't need to see god i don't need to see an angel the things i have heard from them are credible and i can share it and i can bet with my life wherever i go because this amen that will not stand here to speak lies to us am i preaching to you now we are called to be witnesses so we are called to share our own experience of christ with our community we are called to share the things we have learned in church with the people around us with our families with our friends i told you that lot is a type of the church one day god told abraham i will destroy sodom and gomorrah i will destroy sodom and gomorrah with fire 
just like God have sent our apostle the high priest Jesus Christ to tell us that in a twinkling of an eye and in a moment the heavens will roll away like a mat and this earth will melt with fervent heat everything shall be melted only those who are raptured and caught up to be with him shall escape the second death we have been told and we believe it we know that this world will be destroyed we know it and like Lot, the messengers that have come to us they told Lot, we shall destroy this city. We shall destroy this city. But because you have believed our report, we have saved you from the coming destruction. But if you have any friends or family in the city, Genesis chapter 19 verse 17, go and tell them it is time to escape to the mountain. May the Lord give you the spirit of boldness. May you obey the commandment of this messenger standing here as an angel of the Lord telling you that Sakama will be destroyed. Dansuman will be destroyed. May you believe my report that a day is coming when this beautiful building will not be here. We will be gone. It may be in a year's time. It may be in a month's time. It may be in a week's time. It may be in a day's time. It may even be in the next one minute but one thing I'm sure of if the people of God shall obey the voice of the spirit the voice of God calling us forth now and saying that it's time to go to our families it's time to go to our friends it's time to go to our communities it's time to knock on the doors and tell them that Jesus is coming again but for now you can enjoy salvation you can enjoy prosperity you can enjoy health it is time to go out and to declare the gospel to the community around us it is time in the name of Jesus it is time it is time he says go out go out go out go out is it there Genesis 19 usually because I preach off the calf when I quote I want you to verify for me amen Pakataya. oh yes Genesis chapter 19 are you there oh verse 12 he said and the men said to lot go to verse 12 that's where i have it and the men we need this but we'll come there and the men said unto lot has thou any besides thee has thou any besides thee have you any besides thee son-in-laws and sons and daughters and whatsoever you have in the city go to them do you have any other people besides you living in and around Sakama? Everybody here has somebody living in and around Sakama. Everybody here has somebody that if we hear that they are sick, we will be worried. We will find time to go and visit them. And now they are not sick, but God is going to destroy the earth. And God does not want any human being to perish with the earth he's going to destroy. His plan is not to destroy people he created in his image. He does not have such an idea. God does not have such an idea. But he will destroy this earth and the heavens and punish wickedness. And we don't want our family members to perish in that kind of flame of fire. How many of you want your mothers to go to hell? Yeah, today is Mother's Day after the church. Go and read these same scriptures. Say, Mommy, I came to read this to you. An angel visited our church and he said, God is going to destroy this house. But God does not want you to perish with the house. So, Mommy, can we escape? Can we escape? Listen, we are escaping to a mountain, we are escaping to Zion. In verse 19, they said, Hurry, they took hold of Lord. They gave him time. God has given us time as a church. God has given us time to go around and knock on doors and tell everybody about the love of God. How this loving God would not want us to perish in the coming fire. God has given us time. He wants us to go around and tell everybody and tell everybody. Some of us will travel to foreign lands but it is not only traveling to a foreign land that makes what you are doing missions. Right here God has brought the foreign lands to us. Right here there is somebody sitting next to you from upper west 
You don't need to travel to Upper West to reach someone from Upper West. Right beside you, there is somebody sitting beside you from Enquanta, from a place where your car cannot go because of the bad roads. But God has brought them next to you. It is time. Missions must not just even be knocking on doors outside. Missions is also about reaching one another, even in the church. Intra-church mission. Right here, you know a brother or a sister who is joking with this thing we call faith. You know a deacon who is joking with the thing we call Christianity. You know somebody joking with what we practice. You know someone destroying our church with sin. You know someone who is destroying the church. You know someone. You know someone. You know someone. Sometimes, can, can I speak? I'm not your pastor, so let me say it like a prophet. Amen. This time, I've changed my title to evangelist. So let me... <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I wish you understand this. Listen. Somebody wants her husband to sing in the choir. But she's afraid of somebody who has been coming to rehearse her. Because the way they see you playing around other people's husbands, they don't feel safe. Am I preaching? Missions is about us. Us. Lot, first of all, needed to believe for himself. Three steps to effective missions. We must first of all believe for ourselves. Missions is expensive. It's involving. John 6, 28. What must we do to work the works of God? Jesus answered, the work of God is to believe on him that is sent. Without faith, you cannot do missions. The people who need the gospel can't pay for it. Am I preaching to you? Permit me to share this with you. The, uh, about two years ago, the Lord told us to reach out to East Africa. And this year, we started reaching out to East Africa. And it will marvel you that when we have meetings in East Africa, we send money, we wire money from Ghana to people in East Africa. We pay for our own travels, pay for our upkeep, our own hotel. We send money for the meetings to be organized. It's expensive. Without faith, you will not do it. Already you have a beautiful church, bigger than the one I pastor. Why do you want to go out? Because your overseer believes in what Jesus said, that he will destroy this earth again. Give the Lord a clap of ring. The police is quiet. Am I preaching to you? Can, can we reach out to our community? They told Lot, do you have anyone else besides you in this city? Go to them and tell them that tomorrow fire will come down. We are not sent to go and scare the people. We are sent to tell them the truth. And to show them the love of God. Fear won't save the world. Love will do. Should I say it again? Fear will not save the world. Love will do. And the destiny of this generation lies with us. We are the people of faith. If Lot was here, he will obey and go to the houses. When, if Noah was here today, don't you think he will go and warn the people? If Paul was here, he will go everywhere, even when he doesn't have money. But they have served their generation. And David, having served God according to his will, after that, he went to sleep. They have finished their work and have gone to sleep. Your early apostles have served. All of us are here because some people gave their life and time so that we will believe. Now it's our turn. One song I always love to sing. Land of our birth, we pray to thee. I love and uh, in the years to be. When we are grown and take our place. As me. Yeah, yes. I'm a very powerful singer. Say amen to that. <laughs> no, am I preaching to you? We have grown now. You have grown out of children's service. Now you are in an adult service. Your apostles have thought about you. They have given you a special service. A service that speaks only English. It's a very powerful thing. And, Apostle, 
one thing is if this church does not go out maybe you should distribute them among the tree speaking and the gun speaking oh you know why please we, without any offense i want to tell you the truth merely because we have been taught how to read and write we are more resource for the work of god than my mother who cannot write her name am i preaching to you merely because you can read the bible we are more resourced for missions so if we just come here and look beautiful on a sunday morning park our beautiful cars outside sing the wonderful songs have this wonderful music your sound excellent look at your beautiful chairs and we just sit here and enjoy we become like lot how did lot end up in sodom because after he prospered he felt like it was too cumbersome to stay in the same place with abraham abraham is too some way when you go to the other church they will force you put on headgear do this they will say holiness that we want our own church and usually this is for a good intention but if we don't take care starting an exclusive english church will turn us into a community living within sodom and 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 we minding our own business lot was living in sodom and had daughters who were virgin and have not known any man that tells you that lot had a very holy and a powerful church in a sinful city and nobody cared to warn the people in the city that you can also live the life we are living am i preaching to you or, or, or i'm just talking i mean i came to speak to you i didn't just come to speak that is the way it is i came to speak to you it's powerful lot was able to raise godly children in a perverse generation just like apostolic church I, I, when we close i want to ask uh, overseer how you are able to do the way you are able to marry because i'm trying to get the young people in my church to marry and when you ask them say five years time it offends me what do you mean by five years time amen and amen ah yeah you come to church you will wear your skirt to your knee level with your high heel everything tight fitting you everything is shaking the young men can concentrate when will you marry say five years time so why are you wearing tight things where's some magazine because we want to focus say amen to that if you wear those tight things you must agree to marry us because yes otherwise you are confusing us say amen to that may the lord release the grace of marriage upon our church in the name of jesus <laughs> No, am I preaching to you? Oh, listen, I haven't changed and I'm trying to change and God will change me for the better in the name of Jesus. No, Lot was a godly man. Lot was a very godly man. Am I preaching to you? A very godly man but living in Sodom. A very holy church living in Sakama. And it is time. And it's a good season. Most of your young sisters and brothers have just finished Wasi some will finish bc and they have nothing to do they are going to walk around the suman roads with their knicker and boxer shorts around them and they will just be walking on the street and it is time for somebody to stand up and tell them that brother you can live the life i'm living say amen to that i say say amen to that listen god will bless this church say amen to that I said God will bless this church. Say amen to that. But your blessing is not supposed to take you away from Abraham. Sometimes we get so blessed and we think it's too cumbersome. Sometimes you just had a boyfriend, not even a husband. Boyfriend. And before you had a boyfriend, Pastor David was your friend. Now you have a boyfriend. It's too cumbersome keeping him as a friend. Because he will ask questions. Eh, little prosperity. I've made you forget who brought you out. No, you will never forget who brought you out. You will stick close to Abraham. Whether you stay or you don't stay, Abraham will be praying for you. And because of that, God will save you. It is time for you to go and look for a brother or a sister. I will say, eh, now they are moving their church to Sakama. And it is a very long distance. So me, I have uh, some church which is very close to my house. So no, 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 no. There, it is not convenience. I said it is not convenience. It is what the purpose of God for our lives. Ah, and God will bless us. How would we become effective? Becoming effective witnesses. Number one. If you can testify on my behalf, you must first of all believe in my innocence. How many of you get the point? 
A witness is not a lawyer. A witness is not an advocate. An advocate sometimes knows I'm not innocent, but he knows the law and he knows how to take me around the law so that I will escape punishment. Jesus is the advocate. He knows the law and he knows how he can go around the law and make sure I'm free. But we are witnesses. And you can never witness about a man whom, who in his innocence you don't believe. How can they believe? If you don't believe in the innocence of God, you cannot testify about the goodness of God. You, you, you lost a relative, isn't it? And the devil came to tell you, God killed your mother. If you don't believe in the innocence of God, you cannot testify about God to your generation. So the first step is believe. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. How do you receive the power? John chapter 7. And this he spoke about the Holy Spirit, which those who believe shall receive. Shall receive. So if you believe, you receive. So we can't even receive the anointing. We cannot receive the Holy Spirit when we don't have faith in God. We can't. So the first step to effective mission is a revival of faith. So that when we go out and the fruits look contrary to our expectation, we can still hang in and hold on because we know that God is faithful. Say amen to that. I say say amen to that. Why will Paul and Silas beaten by a whole market and put in jail still sing praises because they believed that God never caused that beating it God wasn't responsible as 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 a missionary myself I don't talk about my challenges but I've had my own share of challenges in life I'm very young if I start discussing my challenges you will not believe it but it doesn't show you know why I believe in God's person his promises his abilities his power I just believe in it and sometimes when my fruits look contrary to my expectation I just lift up my eyes and I say God you know what you are doing I say you know what you are doing I say you know what you are doing I say you know what you are doing and I just lift up my hands and say, Dear God, I know you know what you are doing, but be very fast because I'm a human being. Say amen to that. Yeah, I know myself. I say, God, be very fast. I know you know what you are doing, but me, I want you to be fast. Say amen to that. Now, the second thing that would help us to be effective in missions is when we continue in the faith. Mark chapter 3 verse 13 to 16. He called those whom he will and they came. And he ordained some to stay. That he might send them to go and preach. You coming to church. Honoring prayer meetings. Fellowship meetings. Reading your Bible. Having quiet time. Giving offerings by covenant. Serving in the house of God. Taking your work seriously. These are things. One book we published last year. I'm praying maybe next week I'll bring you some copies. Steps to total victory. We gave them keys. We told them our church can never win souls if you who have come do not continue to stay. And with many words he exhorted them and they believed. And as many as received the word with gladness, they were baptized and they continued steadfastly in doctrine, in prayer, in fellowship, in the breaking of bread. And, they, 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 and fear came upon everyone. And God did signs and wonders by the hands of the apostles. This is recipe for signs and wonders. And they continued steadfastly in one accord, breaking bread from the temple and from house to house. With gladness and singleness of heart, loyalty. It's not like you come to eat our bread and suck our booze and then you go and betray us. No! Do you understand what I said? Sometimes you come to church, we are serving communion. You come, you do your face. And, and then when you finish, when you step out, everything you say and everything you do is betraying us. God doesn't want it that way. How many of you will continue in faith? Rain or shine, up or down, in the mountains or in the valleys, in the thick or in the thing, in the dark or in the light. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, we will continue in the faith. Acts chapter 14 verse 22. And they confirmed the souls of the disciples and exhorted them to continue in the faith. For we must 
through many persecutions and tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. We must. It's a must. You won't give up because of a little challenge. For our little and momentary afflictions work it for us an eternal weight of glory. 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 May you see that glory when it is unveiled in the mighty name of Jesus. And the last one. If we will ever prosper and be effective in missions, we must go out into the world. Go out into the world into is a preposition or preposition let's take it that way go into it didn't say go around the world as we are going out to witness it's not like when you see that we smoker with that kind of hair you say as for this one you are not ready for salvation on right field it's a very dry field then you go around no 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 go into the middle of the world go ask when i close and we are praying ask god where is the world where are the people? Where are the drunkards? Where are the hardened criminals? Where are they? And may some young men catch that fire and say, God, lead us to the heart of the world. We want to go into the world. Where the unchurched is. One day I traveled to a city, Nairobi. And I was there as a missionary prospecting. And then when I got there, one thing about Kenya is that Nairobi, their walls are very high. There are soldier men everywhere. Anywhere you are entering, they search you and things like that. So it was a very difficult place. And I've been there for two days. And I, I didn't get anybody to speak to. The people I could find to speak to, when I speak English, they look at my face and laugh. Because they speak mainly Swahili. Those who have not been to school. So I was worried. So one day I went somewhere to go and have breakfast. And as I was sitting there, I saw two ladies sitting down somewhere. So I moved my coffee and brought it to their table and I asked them, can I sit beside you? And usually when young women have seen a nice man, they will say yes. They say sit down. So I sat down. Say amen to that. And then we started drinking the coffee. Then I told them that I am sent here as a missionary and I'm looking for a slum and a pastor who works in a slum because the only way to be lawless is to find a lawless society. So if the high walls won't allow me in, the slums would. And after paying for their coffee, they connected me to one lady who connected me to another pastor. And within two hours, I was in a slum, in a place called Mukuru, having a revival meeting, preaching. I was already there with the pastor. And all it took was not to judge young ladies I saw and not to deem ten dollars so much money that i can't pay for their coffee that's all that's all i spoke to the pastor that afternoon he said you say you want to preach i said yes he took me there we preached to the people the following day he called me he said pastor i have three of my pastors here i want them to hear what you told me can we meet we met in their church building i preached to them and then they said uh, can we meet again at two o'clock i said for what he said some of our other pastors who went to work they said they also want to hear you by the time i realized 12 pastors have come as i'm speaking to you i'm traveling again and now i'm speaking to 30 pastors from kenya and uganda who went in slums as we go out don't judge anybody we should judge ourselves here please if you come to church and you are misbehaving and I call and I say brother this is not how to behave in church I'm not judging you say amen to that because if we judge ourselves in church no one will judge us but as we go into the world you are walking with a blind man. The blind man is hitting the legs against. They say, "Are ah, you too? Why are you behaving that way? Can't you just walk straight?" Please, I'm blind. Say amen to that. If you forgot, and I'm what blind, but you, you are enlightened. Your eyes are open. We know Jesus. He has opened our eyes. We can judge ourselves, but we cannot judge the world. As we go out, we are going to share the love of God. I say the love of God. Say amen to that. And I pray that even as you have believed my report, and you are making a decision to go out and to share this testimony with others, may the Lord anoint you. 
may he strengthen you may the lord help you to overcome your own weaknesses as many whose faith are failing may the lord strengthen your faith in the mighty name of jesus may you be courageous in the name of jesus god will take you far in the mighty name of jesus i said god will take you far in the mighty name of jesus it's not like i set out with any special plan that will do this no no, no. if you ask my wife i had never had plans even the name of the church when we started i said uh, we will call this thing global missionaries for christ after some time i realized that the name was too long so i changed and i said we are Calvary missions international after some time i realized that the people didn't like the Calvary. so i said okay we will have trinity uh, 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 um, christian church i realized that christian was disturbing people they go for evangelism they say what is trinity what is this we have changed the name of our church more than five times more than five times and still i have a wife following me you you have been apostolic church of ghana since when and you still say i don't know what the pastors are you don't know what they are doing my church have been with me we have changed it six times five times they are still there when they go people ask them you what is the name of your church and they tell them and they say ah but which one is this they say we are the same people which one is that one too we are the same people which one is that one too we are the same people am i preaching to you but even that God has been faithful. God has been faithful. We have never regretted. I say we have never regretted serving God and you will not regret. You will not regret. You will not regret. One day I was chatting with someone and he asked me, if you have the ability, what would you do? I said, one thing I would love to do is to travel with my children on every missionary trip. He asked me, why? I said, I want to introduce them to the field so that they will have a desire to be missionaries. I have never regretted god have taken us to places we didn't think we will ever get to it was a wrong decision to say i wouldn't practice engineering it was a very wrong decision when you look at it in the eyes of a man but god knew what he was doing only that he was a bit slow but next time he should be very fast in the name of jesus in your case god will be fast as i bring my message to a close i want to give this opportunity to somebody in this building who want to be honest with God and say pastor I was very confused about my faith in Jesus I didn't believe so well but the way you have said it if I can be anointed I need to believe there is somebody or some people in the building today who want to rededicate their lives they want to say that I put my faith afresh in God I want to make that decision today to be very committed to Jesus there is somebody in the building. I want you to be on your feet. Oh yes, all of us, please. Be on your feet. Oh yes. There is somebody in the building. You want to give your life to Jesus. I want all eyes closed for a moment. You want to affirm your faith in Christ. You want to give your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, if you are in the building, you want to make a fresh commitment, lift up your two hands. I have a few seconds. I want to pray with you. Oh Jesus, we give you glory.